day, like, I will fight for the babies. And it's just so awesome that, like, redemption's gonna come, and, like, it's all gonna be over, and we're all gonna be the same in heaven, like, all bed, dancing with Jesus. Like, it just makes me so happy, like, know that there's, like, redemption for the babies, and, like, it's gonna be good. Um, so this was then just when it, like, it got real for me again, and, like, okay, I really gotta get on my face, like, I'm nothing. Like, why was I born in America? Why was I blessed? Like, why am I not waddling down the road looking for food? Like, like God is good, and because he has blessed me so much, like, I want to do his will even more. Like, I want to use the means that I'm given in order to seek his face. Um, so from Swaziland, I didn't think I could, like, I thought my heart was broken enough, and then, you know, I was done, so I was like, we're full, okay, I'll just go and default. We get to Mozambique, and of course, I'm like, awesome, I'm like, let me just weep more. We worked with um, street boys, which you would think that that is like orphan boys that live on the streets, but what it really is, it's like Never Everland, like little Peter Pan, like they're they're all like living, like most of them got mad at their parents and left home, or they got a, got a bad grade and their parents were like, if you don't do this, I'm like, I don't, and some of the boys were, were beat and so they leave home, but like, they're, they're like a little community, like a little spirit, like, and they all look out for each other. Like, it's just so strange. Like, it's so weird. Like, they, like, fight. They, they kill. Like, so one of the boys, like, died, like, a month before we got there. Like, it's just, like, the Satan's got a stronghold on these boys. And they, they run around, like, they're just little, like, mischiefs. But, like, for some reason, like, the Lord gave me such a big heart for them. Like, I'm obsessed with these little kids. Like, I get it. Like, all these boys over here are, like, on the wall. Like, those are little street boys. And they're between, like, the ages of, like, 8, eight and 18. Um, after that, they just become homeless men. But, um... Just, like, they would, on the streets, like, you would be driving around, you just see them, like, they just walk like they're in gang, like, they're so cool. But, like, every day they would come to our house, and we would, like, give them breakfast and, like, do a little Bible study. And, like, as soon as they walked on, like, the land that we were on, like, they would just change into little boys. Like, you could, like, see, like, the hardness of them. Just, like, go, and they would, like, cuddle up in your lap. Or, like, one of the eight-year-olds is, like, skin is eating. He's, like, mm, like, crying. I'm, like, hold him. I'm, like, in a hot second, he's going to go back out, and he's going to be, like, threatening people. You know, it's just so strange and I know it's because the presence of the Lord is where we were like and I know that that's why like Satan's not welcome there like they're not allowed to do that stuff because like they just know like that the Lord was there um so it's kind of like it's it's heartbreaking to say but like some of the older boys like pick a younger boy like in jail like every like everything about it is like corrupt like it is it's horrible um so it, like the, what the Lord taught me throughout the entire month of Mozambique was that we're all misled. Like, as I looked around, I saw little disciples. Like, if, if the Lord gets a hold of these little boys' hearts, like, they can change the world because they're so hardcore and they're so, like, devoted. And so, like, that's when he, like, put a little seed in my heart and, like, grow. And I'm like, I just want to, like, minister to street boys for the rest of my life and, like, raise up a generation that will, like, send them out. Like, I saw little Paul, you know, little, like, David, just, like, I know the Lord's like begging to use them. Like they're not, they're not any different than we are. Like they have purpose, they have breath. Like obviously the Lord wants to use them. So like that's like I was just like so bummed. Like a lot of people on my team are like this is the hardest month ever. Like I want to take them all with me. Like I just want to like tweak a little bit in their heart and just like I want the Lord to just like reach out and touch their heart because they have it all. Like they have it all for them. Like they would be martyrs for the Lord. Like if they just for a hot second like felt the Lord's love. Um. And so. That month too, the Lord was like, "Okay, Ruth, I'm fighting for him." Like it's like every time I would like doubt him, he'd be like, "I'm fighting for him." Like remember Exodus 44, like, "I'm fighting for all of this." Um. So that month, that was midway through the month. It was, I mean, mid midway through the year, and it was just so refreshing for my soul. Was like, okay, like the Lord, like He's not playing. Like I'm not just seeing things; He's like giving me like purpose and like passion, like what He wants me to do. Um. Okay, so from there, I went to South Africa. And from there, we had like South Africa was so chill. Like our minute, like our missionaries were like, okay, this month, like we have stuff you do. It's mostly like just rest. And they're like, why? You know, like that's okay. We'll do it, but like that's strange. And um, so we like did a lot of fun stuff and rested a lot. But like I know it's because the Lord was preparing us for what came next. Like as I arrived to Thailand, I knew He'd given us like a rest in our spirit and like physical rest because of what we're gonna see. Um, we were told as we arrived that we were gonna be working with human trafficking. And I'm really dramatic, so imagine, like, 
running through like old alleys with bazookas and like ripping girls out of chains. Like you like you think dramatically what human trafficking is. I was like, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> but like what it was is they're like, okay, like pack us up with a van and they took us down. It looked like downtown Houston, like it's a Phuket, Thailand. It looked like like it was very appealing to the eyes. Like you see like beautiful women everywhere and like nice looking men and just like bars and <coughs> stores and it look it looks like somewhere you go to eat dinner on vacation. Like and so we're like, okay, what do we do? And like, all of a sudden they were like pointing out, like, oh, that that girl's trafficked, that girl's a prostitute. Like, like what? Like, like you think, you think very like dramatically when you think of trafficking, but it's really like right before our eyes. It's in Houston. Like, Houston is one of the biggest hubs of human trafficking. Like the like 24-hour nail salon, human, like there's girls there that are trafficked. Like, if there's like a massage 24 hours, like the, there's girls in there being trafficked. Like, and that's like that's free the captives. There's this big old ministry in Houston. Like they like go around and minister. Like there's stuff we can do here now to love these girls. Like you don't have to go to Thailand. Like and it's so like refreshing. Like as much as it hurts, like that there's actually stuff here. Like we like to think that we, you know, you gotta go over there. But like right down the road are girls that are like begging to be set free, not only physically but like liberating their spirits and like to find the Lord. Um, so we would walk up and down these bars and like. You, there, some of them would be open, some would be closed. Like we weren't allowed to go into closed ones because we could be taken in an instance. Like it was, it, like we weren't safe. Like we had to like watch our back. We had to have boys with us all the time. Like like human tra like trafficking in general is just like like they don't care to take lives. Like they don't care. Like if they feel threatened, like that's part of the reason why cops don't do much here. Or in general, it's like they don't they have guns. You know, like they're not gonna be like let's talk this out. Like if you're a threat, like they're gonna kill you. Um, and so we like we had to be super careful. Like one time we were like, we con like you go back to like certain bars to like love with certain girls. Like like our ministry it was called She Ministries. It was like self self help. And so we go in and like meet girls and, like slip them a card and be like, if you want to get out, like come to this place and we'll teach you how to like work in a like hotel or you know like another way to like find money. Because some of the girls were there by choice. Like just there's nothing else to do and like that is a, like big bacon type of job. And so, like, we would just go around and, like, build relationships. And, like, we never once talked about Jesus. You know, like, sometimes we would, but, like, he, the Lord didn't need us to say that. Like, they could see it on us, and they, they could see it. Like, they would be shocked. Even as women coming in there, they would be shocked that we didn't want something from them. Like, and that's heartbreaking. Like, we would order Cokes. They'd be like, these people are weird. Like, we would just, like, love on them, like, play games with them and just chat. Um, but, like, at one point, the most heart-wrenching, like, you would see, like, the little Chinese girls, like, or, like, Thai girls down here. But then, like, there would be, like, boxes, like, clear boxes up around, like, on the second floor. And there would be girls gorgeous, like, in gowns and makeup and, like, their hair gorgeous and dancing. And, like, not like, they're just, like, dancing, like, around a pole. Like, and they're, like, fully clothed, but, like, their faces are white and ghostly. Like, and you know, like, you know by looking at a girl's face if she's there by choice or if she's there by, like, force. And that, like, the moment that I saw this girl, like, she's blonde hair. Like, she's either European or American. Like, she had nothing in her. Like, she's emotionless. She's completely callous to, like, what she goes through. I'm like, oh, my land. So, like, that, it got super real that night. And, like, from then on, like, I, like, I feel like the Lord gave me, like, a discerning spirit when it came to, like, whether a girl was there by choice or by force. And, like, that just rocked my heart so much. Like, it got to the point where it's like, Lord, I cannot do this. Like, orphans is one thing because I, like, I have, like, a little bit of control. Over. Like, I can hug them. Like, if I go up and hug a girl, like, I'm going to get, like, in so much trouble. Like, like they're, like, property. Like, they're something that, like, you got to pay for. Like, and you would see, oh, my gosh, like, I, I fought with the Lord so much. You would see American men there, like, businessmen walking off with, like, four girls. Like, it, it just, like, broke my heart. But, like, broke my heart more than, like, they're, like, in chains. Like, they're, they're captivated in their own sin. Um, it's not just the girls that are hurting, but, like, the men. Like, at one point, like, the U.S. Navy came and imported them. Like, they're all just, like, everywhere, like, drinking and just, like, get, taking all the girls. And, like, I had a bigger broken heart for the boys that are, like, like think that that's all. Like, those are disciples. Like, those are those are men who, like, could be doing big things for the Lord. Like, the world is corrupt. Like, that's what I came to. Like, we need a redemption. Like, we need the Lord to come back. Pronto. Um, but that month was just, like, <coughs> the point where I was, like, I can't take anymore. Like, I really can't take anymore. Like, please. Like, 
there's just so much like day after day after day. And again, Lord, it's like we're not fighting for him. Like, and there's 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 liberation coming with like human trafficking. I know it's about to be busted. Like, I know the Lord's gonna like raise up a generation that like knocks it out. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. And I'm gonna intercede until that happens. Like, I'm gonna beg God, like, use me if I got to. Like, I don't care. Like, I, it's gotta be like it's the biggest slavery ever known, and it's using the Lord's daughters and the Lord's sons. There's like men in it too. Um, little boys, like there was like a three-year-old girl that was found, that was being raped over and over and over again. Um, it just, it just breaks, it breaks my soul. Like, that's all I can even say. Like, and I would like to say like, and we saw human trafficking. We, you know, helped all the orphans. Like, no. Like, I just barely dipped my toe in like what the world is like and how much pain there is. And like, but like, I have so much confidence that like, the spirit is in me. I can do whatever he wants me to. Like the spirit is in you, like in all of you guys. Like, like the spirit's gonna do work as soon as you say, "Use me." Like, and that doesn't mean you have to get on a plane. Like, you can walk out. I, I know that some of you are doing like, like most of you are probably doing what the Lord wants you to do. But there's some of you that aren't, and I pray that like He'll touch your heart and tell you what you're supposed to do. Because we're only here for a minute. Like we're only like we're only on earth for a minute. Like, and. You, as well as myself, like, I want to do as the Lord wants me to do. Like, I'm not happy. Like, I, I feel like we're never, we're never going to reach what the Lord, like, we're never going to reach the Lord as much as we want help. But, like, I'm going to keep trying, keep trying. Like, I've had, like, three times in my life where I was like, the Lord's presence is here. And it makes me so mad. I'm like, Lord, I want you. Like, why can't I just have you? Um, but, like, all he wants is us to just surrender and throw up our hands and say, use me. Whatever that even looks like. I feel like I haven't been used in six months, but I know I have. Like, I know that he's, like, still working through me. But it's just hard because even during all these times, I felt so small. I was, like, I never felt like I was doing what I was made for. You know, it's like Satan's always going to tell you, like, oh, you're not enough. Even getting up here to speak tonight. Like, I woke up this morning, called my best friend and cried. I was like, I can't do it. Like, <laughs> I can't be used. Like, and that's just Satan being like, Ruth, like, I'm sorry. You're, you're flesh. You're sinful. No joke I am, and that's why I'm so passionate about Christ, because he freaking touches me every day and redeems me every single day. Um, so those were, like, four of the points that, like, four of the months that, like, rock my soul. I could talk, I could seriously talk for two weeks straight and just talk all about it, and I still wouldn't even touch the surface of, like, what I saw the Lord do and what, like, there's, just, there's so much pain, but there's so much joy, and there's so much of the Lord. Like, everywhere you go, you're like, that's obviously the Lord. Like, that woman should not have joy, and she has joy. Like, that that little boy should not have hope, but he's hopeful, and he's waiting, and he's anxiously, like, searching. Like, it's incredible just to see, like, the kingdom come. Like, it's, it's coming a little bit of time. It's about to boom, and it's going to be brilliant. I cannot even wait. Um, so, I wrote a blog. I, I was attempting to just sum up the wrong race, but I wrote a blog a couple months ago, like, when I was still on it, just to, like, sum up, like, how insane it was. So I'm just going to read it. And in a few minutes, I'm going to see if you have questions. If there's something that throws you off in here, just ask me about it. Um, so I was thinking, I was like, everyone's going to ask how my year was. What am I going to say? And so I was trying to like type a little paragraph, and it turned into be like five pages. But here we go. Basically, it was one hell of a year. Excuse my language, but that's the only thing that will sum it up. <laughs> um, it has been psychotic and brilliant. It has been the best and the hardest year of my life. It has made me laugh till I cry and cry so hard that I can't help but laugh. I've seen an angel and I've seen people who are possessed by demons. I've rode planes, bikes, taxis, tuk-tuks, cars, tractors, double-decker buses, motorcycles, back of trucks, trailers, on top of buses, and any other form of transport to get you there. I've loved and I've hated. I've missed my family and I've made a new one. I've eaten all sorts of rice and I've also eaten a street rat. <laughs> I've met Christ advocates all over the world, as well as people who persecute Christ followers. I've spoken the name of Jesus to eager ears, and I've been told to hush and leave, or there will be consequences. I've heard many languages in the language of, tongue, of tongues. I've had dreams from the Lord and intense lies planted in my head from Satan. I've drunk the best coffee and the worst water. I've run to and from police. I've, I've slept in hammocks, tents, rooftops, bunk beds, storage units, hostels, airports, airplanes, train stations, trains, hotels, double-decker buses, golf courses, monasteries, under the stars, safaris, homeless shelters, and anywhere else you get tired. 
I realized that feet are even more beautiful when they're covered in dirt. I've accepted my passion to adopt as many babies as the Lord gives me. I've seen one of our street boys with a slosh in his throat. I've watched Slumdog Millionaire in India, Lion King in Swaziland, and Blood Diamond in Mozambique. Those are movies. I've seen people healed by the Lord and people who have been healed by witch doctors. I've learned a few chords on the guitar and learned how to pop popcorn on the stovetop. I've embraced mixing the four things in the pantry into a casserole. I've got an embarrassing number of days without showering. I've deemed it okay to drink the water even if it is a slight burgundy color. You gotta do what you gotta do when you're thirsty. I've climbed the Himalayas and choked down curdled milk. I've learned to sew and to wake up at ungodly hours. I've seen termite hills double my height and the third smallest person in the world. I've stared at the Southern Cross and at wild horses running in a field. I've only brushed my hair once in five months. Don't judge me. <laughs> I've hugged on gypsy kids and be been told to, to pay $50 USD for a five mile taxi ride. You know we ran out. <laughs> we said no. <laughs> I've seen a policeman dismiss jail for all of us. Okay, I'll just have to explain this one. We got pulled out of cars. There were seven of us in a five seater car. And they're like, put up the handcuffs. We're like, okay. Like, South Africa jail, why not? And I was like, he saw a keychain that was in the car. He's like, if you give me that, you can go. We're like, okay, take the keychain. So we like, didn't have to go to jail. So strange. You want to brag? Got it. <laughs> I've seen hundreds of orphans thankful for their one meal of rice each day. I have seen grandmas climbing mountains to go to church. Devotion. I have been swimming in the most gorgeous watering holes. I've been given gifts and asked to preach because I'm simply white. I have seen prostitutes leave their profession to pursue the Lord. I have seen kids eager to hear more stories about the one true God. I have whispered Bible stories to kids falling asleep under the, under the stars. I have seen kids be disowned because of their surrender to Jesus. I have gone on a sailboat to get to Untouched Beach. I have traveled in a van for one month that didn't have a door. <laughs> I have witnessed my dinner being killed in front of me many times. I purchased, I, I purchased things for 70% less than I would have in the States. I've lived without a washer and a dryer and a dishwasher for a whole year. I found peace in seeing my family's faces via, via Skype. I've screamed worship songs on the rolling hills in Europe. I've drawn water for drinking and bathing from a well. I've bathed, fished out dinner, and done laundry all from one pond. I've gone to a random Romanian opera and a South African rugby game. I've worked lame office work and witnessed an intense motorbike accident. I have a new obsession with sunsets. I've been on a brilliant safari and nearly been smashed by elephants. That's a fun story. I've seen children carrying lollipops and I've seen children carrying AK-47s. I've seen the lame walk in the blind sea. I've had a rat crawl up my leg and a spider in my ear. I've had many stomach aches and even more heartaches. I have a new appreciation for my family and a perfect picture of how to raise mine. I have been knocked to the ground because of the presence of the Lord. I have missed births, weddings, birthdays, and anniversaries, but witnessed, witnessed so much more. I found out what living by the Spirit truly means and that it doesn't fade away. I have gotten used to not texting or being reached. I miss it. I have become physically sick because the spiritual atmosphere was so dark. I have been awoken by dreams from the Lord. I've heard testimony after testimony of how grateful, graceful our God is. I have cut ties from people from the past and joyfully tied new ones. I've eaten more bugs and just about turned vegetarian many of times. <laughs> I've been given a passion from deep within that can only be from the Lord. I've blacked out from the heat and nearly frost, got frostbitten from freeze. I've screamed declarations from rooftops and whispered prayers in cellars. I've gained maturity in deep things and immaturity in trivial, trivial things. I've been to five of the seven continents. I've learned how to dis distinguish what type of bug is crawling on me without looking. Is there a mosquito on my back? Not so. Is that a roach? <laughs> I've been to Qatar, India, Nepal, China, Romania, Moldova, Swaziland, Mozambique, South Africa, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Australia, and Malaysia. It's been written on my heart that I've been made for another world. I felt the Lord as close as my skin as far as the moon. I went from three sisters to 33 sisters. I've answered a call. I've cooked meals over fire because there was no other option. I've contemplated kidnapping, kidnapping kids, but instead walked off brokenhearted. 
I've cut open a fish to find whole bugs cooked inside of them, mm. only to eat them for dinner. I've filled up journal after journal. I've written a song and memorized so many others. I've comprehended that I'm merely a breath, a vapor, a slave to righteousness, a flower here one day, gone the next. A daughter of the Most High King, a prime target for Lucifer himself, a leader, a follower, an extremist, an alien. I figured out that I'm obviously made for another world. But with all that said, I'm still not fulfilled. Like, I saw so many things. I've seen more than if I was in seminary my entire life, I've seen more things like spiritual. Or if I was in college, or just getting education the rest of my life, I've seen more than I could possibly fathom. And, but I'm still not fulfilled. Like, I still need the Lord every single second. Like, yeah, that's a lot of stuff, but I still need the Lord every moment of my life. Um, So obviously, I've been wrecked. I've been home six months, and I still can cry in a hot second. Like I think of like, oh, here it comes. Um, the Lord just every single day He just reminds me like how much He's needed, and that I, I'm nothing. I can try, but I fail like so often. Like I'm not holy. I'm like, and that's something I just like want to like keep saying. Like I am not. I'm nothing. Like I'm flush every single day. I'm flush. Um. Something I realized as I reflected, and while I was gone, obedience is not fun. Like, like it's not like, yay, I obeyed. Like, I'm so glad I obeyed. Like, even when I used to like obey my parents, sometimes when I was younger, like it's, it's not like you were ever like, I'm so glad I did that. Like, like you're not. It's not comfortable. Jesus obeyed the Lord and went down on the cross. That wasn't fun. Like, I went, saw some of the most harsh things. Like, I obeyed the call. And it wasn't fun. Like, yeah, there were those few moments that were fun, but it's like, obeying is never fun. Like, you're never, like, it's never comfortable. Um, but with that, like, there's, like, for some reason I just feel like there's just, like, fear in this room right now. Like, I, I feel like the Lord is, like, saying something to someone, there's, like, fear. And, like, I just want to cast that out. Like, that's not allowed here. Like, like if the Lord is, like, pulling out your heart, like, it's for a reason. Like, I could cry about it because it's so real. Um, like, if the Lord's, like, speaking to you to do something, like, do it. Like, yeah, it hurts, and, like, obedience isn't easy, but, like, like he breathed this into being. Like, why can't we, like, sacrifice for the however many years we're living? Um, anyways. So, the Spirit is in me, and that's the only reason I could survive the 11 months. Like, that's the only thing, hands down. Because if I would try to do it on my own, if I got confident, <laughs> done so. Um. So that's my encouragement here, like, like the Lord, like you're breathing, like obviously there's there's a reason you're breathing, like I said at the beginning, like, like the Lord wants to use every single one of you, whether that means going to Africa, I wouldn't be surprised if he's filled with too, that's a lost place, <laughs> or to work with trafficking, like you're never too old, you're never too established, like what is established anyway, you know like what America tells you, or like what your friends tell you, no, like you're never, you're never unhealthy, I mean like, I mean obviously you are, but like the Lord can heal you in a hot second if like, every, like, no one in here is not being called. Like, you're constantly being called. Whether that means going, or that means loving your mom harder, or, like, whether that means, like, like, you see a homeless man, like, no, you don't have to give him a dollar, you don't know where to give it, you know, but, like, talk to him. Like, sometimes they want to be talked to. It's like, like, let the Spirit lead you. Like, if you feel, like, anything, like, go for it. Like, what's the worst you can have in, like, your blush will die? Darn, like, we're in the Lord's presence. You know, like, 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 Oh, I can't even take it. Um, it just pumps me up. Like, like we're we're redeemed already. Like, we're just waiting to be in His presence. Like, like what's the like? What do we have to fear? Um, so, like the McAdams, they packed up their family and went. Like that, that. I'm not saying like let's all go pack our bags and our families and just fly to land. But like, what if? Like, what if that is your call? Like, what if the Lord has been whispering to you and like, like trying to push him on, but, like, I say that, but I also said, Houston is a lost place, like, Kingwood is a lost place, like, we're suffocating here, like, in Texas, like, it's not, like, you don't have to go, like, there's people there that the Lord is using there, and there's people here that he's used here. I was just going to say, when you were talking about Houston is a lost place, um, there's a lady who I met a couple months ago that mm -hmm. does the, um, she has a Kevin Garland museum, sure. and uh, they work with sex traffickers around the world, so, I mean, we know it's
six hours and we're gone, just like praying and like like declarations like, Lord, you will work tonight, you know, like saying you are not allowed, you know, like clear that up. Like and those were the most moving times of my life. Like I I loved it even more interceding because I got like first of all I wasn't heartbroken from all this seeing, but like I could just like get on my face and pray. So that is so right. Like you have to like anything needs to be coded in prayer, whether it's trafficking or going to work in the morning, like pray. You know, like that's like direct connection with the Lord himself. Like and I, I get so like I easily I didn't I prayed like twice a day, it's because I was nervous. You know, like but I like I know the power of prayer and I still like get distracted. You know, like it's like it's gotta be a constant reminder, like That's so good, though. That's so, like, inter- intercession is, like, the key in all of it. And I would like to talk about that later. later. Yes, please. One thing I can ask you, mm-hmm. um, you kind of said that you saw him, you saw him healing or mm-hmm. you prayed for him to heal. So did you notice any sort of um, co- common factors between what was healed and what wasn't? Like, with the lady who, um, who was in the same room as the family member, mm-hmm. did you say certain types of people, they have kind of like a gift for certain types right. of people? Right. shut up by demons out of him. Like and we like we tried so hard and like 